So those who embrace AI and understand how to use it effectively and leverage it into their business are going to be light years ahead of, you know, everybody else out there. It's There's all these things that are actually just give us that those small unfair advantages. So now I, I don't think like there's nuances of coaching, which rely on understanding body language, tonality, pacing, things like that. When you, when I see that you, maybe you feel a little uncomfortable being able to just see those tiny little inflection points in, in, you know, even, even your eyes disappearing off into different directions, which I don't believe AI can, you know, it may do eventually maybe five or 10 years into the future, but it certainly for now, you've still got to have that human to human interaction as a, as a coach in order to really be able to effectively coach somebody. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you could train a GPT model these days to do, you know, 80% of the, the work in terms of giving people tactical, practical answers. Um, but it won't be able to see emotions or feel emotions, mm. if that makes sense. And really that's the art of, cause you could tell me, you know, you could type something into a GPT model, but it, it won't know that there's a fear behind that, that or, uh, some other sentiment behind that, which is going to ultimately, you know, prevent you from taking action. Yeah. I want to get into, you know, two things really. At the end of this episode, it's going to be a remarkable story about some a way that he made a lot, lot, lot of money in a very short amount of time. And before that, I want to hear about his experiences. So I'm thinking you're listening. You want to know what did he go through? What did he learn? How did he fail in his podcast? Let's start there. Robin. Uh, tell me first one story about something you really learned from the podcast the hard way. And then let's get into that story about how you made a whole bunch of money in a short amount of time. Yeah. I mean, the biggest mistake I made with the Fearless Business podcast is when when we first sort of started it, I wasn't particularly intentional around it. And so didn't plan. I was just like, right, we're going to record some content and then whack it up at the time. I think we were using Anchor FM. So um, but it was just a, there wasn't much sort of strategy or planning behind it. Thankfully, I did correct that further down the line. But um, I got to about episode, believe it or not, episode 67. And I was getting to a point where I was like, oh, God, I'm having to like record yet another episode. And there was, I started to get my first learning. So I thought I would get a faster ROI from my podcast. Probably, again, it's one of those things that we get attached to, but then when it doesn't happen, we end up feeling a bit disappointed. But we got to episode 67. I'm questioning my life choices as to whether I should have started a podcast. And then in the same week, um, this was actually just before, uh, so late 2019, and we've been doing it probably for about 18 months by this point. I got e two separate emails, one from Google, another from Microsoft, and then a few couple of months later, another from a big pharmaceutical company. All three had listened to episode two of my podcast, where I think I talked about growth mindset versus fixed mindset, and they wanted me to to speak um, at their various events. Um, two two online conferences. One was going to be in person, but it got moved online because of COVID. So I think in total, those three speaking engagements alone totaled about twelve thousand pounds or something like that. It's about fifteen thousand um, dollars. And it's one of those things, if I'd not persevered blindly, like something which I alluded to at the start of this, pig-headedness, stubbornness, I'll just carry on. I'd set a goal. My only goal I'd set was to get to 100 episodes. So it, it showed me, no, no, this is worth doing. This is worth pursuing. Let's carry on. Let's and, and at that point, I started to get a bit more strategic around the content. So that was my first learning. The second learning, I thought an easy way to get um, content out and to grow the podcast. Not that there's this is there's a right or wrong here actually, because there there is some benefits to this, but it was to get guests on. But again, I wasn't intentional around the guests that I was getting on. So many of the guests I didn't know, and too many of them had quite, I would say, small audiences. So we did great episodes and great content, but when it came to actually promoting it, and my audiences were relatively small at this point, um, we didn't get much traction from it because they they were quite reluctant to share it because they were just busy with life. So as we kind of approached the 100 episode mark, I was like, right, I am going to make a plan now. I'm going to get much more strategic. And we made about um, three or four changes to our strategy at that point, which ultimately ended up with getting about four times the number of downloads that we were getting prior to it. So I, I recognize I've been speaking a bit. So fire away with your questions if you want to dig into that or, you know, we can. You just, I, I, can I have some along. questions I'm going to be asking. So keep going. You're where you are right now is the three or four changes. I think the listener's excited to hear this. I don't want to pause it. 
<laughs> the three to four changes that you made that I think you said quadrupled your listeners. Okay, yeah. keep going there. That's it. So uh, first thing, the first change we made was we shift pivoted away from just doing guest episodes. So we now we have a mix, which is um, one guest episode with somebody who has pre-built a good audience. They are an expert authority in their field, but most importantly, I already have some element of a relationship built with them. Um, uh, you know, or there's a partnership there. So I know when we launched the episode, it's, it's going to do well. And we, so we went for one in four uh, guest episodes and then three and four are monologues. And that came off the back of um, a friend of mine kept on trying to tune into the podcast because he thought he'd hear from me. And he's like, Robin, I keep on hearing from these random strangers. Like, I want to hear more from you. So we went from majority guest episodes into majority monologues. And now we kind of do a little bit of a radio show type thing where I'll get much more involved at the start and the end of the podcast, bring the guest in. So it's it's a little bit more interactive that way. The second change which we made was um, I just went through, like looked at the admin of the episode. And we, we again, we hadn't put massive, we put some thought into it, but not enough into the SEO, the search engine optimization of each episode. So the titling of the episodes, the descriptions, what we were linking to in terms of call to action and various other things. The, the podcast admin wise just wasn't terribly well organized. So we went through um, at this point, we're at about just under a hundred episodes. We ripped through all hundred episodes, re-optimized all of them. We, I fixed, there was some ordering issues with the episodes. We reordered everything. And also at the same time, we changed platforms because uh, I realized that we were a li little bit limited with our reach on the platform we were in. So we actually ended up switching to Podbean, which got us much better reach on a few extra channels as well. The next thing which we did was we did a relaunch because we could have just carried on releasing episodes at the time we were doing weekly. Um, and I thought, no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to go through a relaunch process here and try and get people a bit more excited about like, let's make it an event. And so, um, we recorded 10 episodes. We, and literally we just released them all in really quick succession, like day up one, one each day. And that kind of just gave the whole podcast a bit more of a, a, a boost and a combination of those three things literally within the first is probably took us about I don't know, 60 days before we started to really see a big difference in the traffic on the the podcast. But yeah, it 4 x our downloads just by doing a combination of all those things. Now, I'm sure there was probably one of them which made the bigger impact. So I couldn't tell you what that was. So maybe there's a lesson learned there that maybe we should have done one thing at a time and tested and measured. But for me, it was like, no, I just got to, I got to get re-enthused about this and just do a big sort of um, big launch basically. 